Abraham how he sees it from eternity. So can I be safe to, can it, it is safe to say that the way God, the way this, the way our lives look from eternity is far different than the way it looks in time. That's why, that's why, that's why uh, God could give a phrase uh, to Bishop Blake and say, I see you in the future and you look much better than you do right now because he, he, God can give you a glimpse from an eternal seat into time and things look much better. So then what God does, he gives you words from eternity that will impact time. That's why this is the eternal word. Y'all come on. Y'all come on. That's why this is the eternal word of God. Y'all still with pastor? So he says now, I have made thee a father of many nations. So God is saying to him, I have made you. So he, not being a father, don't even understand what God has made him to be. He say, how can it be that you have made me something that I don't see? How can, how can you say made? Shouldn't you say you plan on making? Shouldn't, should, it, it sounds, you know, like Abraham would probably think, shouldn't he be saying, I shall make you? But he says to him, I have already made. Why? Because before God ever spoke to him, he already had Jeremiah 29 and 11. I know the vision and the plan. So he can say, watch this. In other words, my plan is already worked from where I'm sitting. The way I see it, you already have been made a father of many nations because my plan is already in effect. Even though it is not completed yet, in time, it's completed from where I'm sitting. Because God sees it in its entirety. And so God says to him, I have made you a father of many nations. And so God is sharing with him the vision for his life. But watch this. God is telling him something that he sees that Abraham can't see, but what God is doing is giving it to him in words so that the words God gives to him can start changing how he sees his own circumstance. So he can change how he begins to look at himself. Can I tell you God's been trying to get some of y'all to change how you look at yourself? Can I tell y'all that God's been trying to impact your life with words of eternity and cause you to change how you see yourself? He's trying to get you to see yourself and your life the way he sees it. That is why the enemy does not want you to receive the eternal word because the eternal word will impact your life in time and change it into what God wants it to be. He said, he says, I have made you. Even though it wasn't completed. Because it let me encourage you. There is, God said, I have made you because there is nothing on earth or in time that exists that can stop God's plan. So it doesn't matter what you're looking at right now. It don't matter what you're looking at right now. Can nothing stop his plan. And the plan in your life has already begun. The plan in your life has already begun to be worked by God. 
He says now, he says, he says, he says here, he says, uh, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth, watch this, the dead. So now, God took dirt, I hear you, Holy Ghost. God took dirt in Genesis chapter 2 from verse 7, Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, he formed man. He took dirt. He formed man. Yeah, yeah. Then, it, and, but then, but then watch this. He had to breathe somewhere. So he had, so he had to give the dirt nostrils. Didn't say, watch this, he didn't say he gave him eyes. He didn't say he gave him ears. He said he breathed in his nostrils. So he, once he formed him, he had to make nothing but a nose. He had to create an entry place. That's why you got to make room for God in your heart. Because he'll breathe the breath of life. So the Bible says that he breathed in him and man became a living, man became a living what? Soul. And so God formed man. He, 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 he breathed in him and made him and man became a living soul. So now when God breathed in man and man became a living soul, then that means he, he responded to the life that's in God. The breath of God endangers anything that's dead. The breath of God endangers everything that's dead. Because if the breath of life that comes from God hits anything that's dead, it's going to stand up. Thank you, Lord. That's why, that's why after he was prophesying to Ezekiel in the valley of dead bones, the Bible says that everything came together. He began to give him a word, watch this, began to give him a word. And the word, when he prophesied to the bones, says the bones start coming together, bone to his bone. So that means at the instruction or at the entrance of the word, Bones got marching instructions. Mo bones got direction. Bones and each bone connected to it. The finger didn't connect to the foot. Everything knew where to go. Everything connected. The elbow, the forearm, the, everything knew where to go. And your arm didn't connect to his arm. Every arm knew where it belonged. Everything knew where to go and knew its place. Therefore, then the Bible says that sin you, flesh, all of this came upon it. And so when everything was in order, it still wasn't alive. God was moving dead pieces. But watch this. Then he said prophesy to the wind. When he prophesied to the wind, the east wind came. And then the Bible says that they stood up a mighty army. When they stood up a mighty army, it was only after the breath of God came. So anything that's dead, when the breath of life touches it, when the breath of God touches it, it's going to come to life. Watch this. When God, God did it only after he brought everything together in proper order and structure. Because if the breath of God had come in the valley, everything would have stood up. Bones would have stood up, but out of place. Bones would have stood up, but out of place. Things would have stood up, but out of place. That is, that is why he put it in order first. He connected everything first. 
Then he had the wind come. Then he had the breath of God come. So when God speaks, he speaks, his words are life-giving words. His words are eternal words. So the life of God, who is in eternity, impacts your life every time God speaks to you. Even as God speaks to you now, there are things in your life that God is shifting and God is changing and God is pulling stuff down. He's building stuff up. He's putting things in order. Even now, while you're receiving from him. Are y'all still with past? He says now, he says, now, and quickeneth the dead and calleth those things watch this which be not as though as though they were he says and calls those things what things calls those things what things those things that be not so the things he calls are the things that are not the things that you can't see the things that you can't see in your life yet the things that he sees in your life that you don't see the things that he wants in your life that you don't see the things that he has planned for your life that you don't see so those things that have evaded you, he calls them. Because he sees them in your life. You don't see them in your life, so you may think that, well, I have to give up now. You may think, well, it's not going to happen for me now. You may think, well, that must not be God's will for me. You may think there are a number of things that could cause you to say, oh, well. But God don't work like that. God calls those things that he has freely given you, that he has planned for you, that he has willed for you. God calls those things that are not as though they were. So he calls those things that are not in your life as though they were in your life. So what's been out of place, God calls it in place. Watch this. God doesn't have to tell it to come to your life. He just tells you it's in there. He don't, he don't, he don't, he don't have to, he don't have to tell it to come. He look, He don't have to tell it, say, look at here, he needs this, you get over here. No, he don't do that. He looks at you and say, this is what it is. This is what you have. And when he looks at you, looks at you and says, this is what you have. Then what he has said you have, say, okay, I got to go. I belong in his life I belong in her life because he has already called me into her life when he told her she has me so what's been missing in your life he has already told belongs in your life and so now your thing is God says I have it since God says I have it whatever it is that you have that is not yet has to come because God sees it where it belongs he don't talk he don't give, God ain't telling it, listen, I need you to come over yonder and, and, and get over here. I need you to turn left. No. He says, this is what you have. I call those things that be not as though they already. Watch this now. Watch this. Y'all still with pastor? 
Woo, we running, we running on with God. Is woo, we yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. He says, he says, he calls those things which be not as though they were. So he speaks to you and he tells you that uh, you have what you don't see. You have what's not yet there. You drive what you don't yet drive. You live where you don't yet live. He tells you. When did he tell you? He said, he, this is when he told you. Watch this. He says, you're going to live in houses that you didn't build. You're going to drink from wells that you didn't dig. What he's telling you is where he's going to bring you that you are not yet. You don't even have boxes, but you finna move. You don't even know you finna move. But 